in the absence of a quorum of the mayor and city council of the city of Victorville, the city clerk calls to order the five o'clock meeting of, of the city council of the city of Victorville and the city council sitting as the library board of trustees, Southern California Logistics Rail Authority, Southern California Logistics Airport Authority, successor agency to the Victorville Redevelopment Agency, the Victorville Joint Powers Financing Authority, the Victorville Water District, and the City Council performing the housing functions of the former Victorville Redevelopment Agency. The meeting scheduled for 5 o'clock is hereby adjourned to 6.45 p.m. Good evening. Um, ladies and gentlemen, tonight it's kind of a little bit of a unique night. Normally the City Council goes into closed session at 5. We only have one item to deal with. So uh, it was the meeting was opened by our City Clerk at 5 o'clock, adjourned until this point in time. Uh, normally we do have public comment before uh, we go into closed session, but because there's so many of you here tonight, and I believe you have uh, a lot to say, I'm going to defer public comment until we bring uh, the council back. There are only three of us here tonight. It's going to be a quick closed session, probably five, ten minutes at the most, but we will start uh, back up by seven o'clock at the latest. So um, sit tight. We'll be right back. We're going in a closed session. I'll have our city attorney. Thank you, Mayor McEachern. We have one closed session item pursuant to Government Code 54956.9A. It is existing litigation between the City of Victorville versus Victorville LLP. Case number is 1002132. To the extent there's reportable action, we will report it at the conclusion of the closed session. I anticipate it will only take five or ten minutes. All right, we shall be right back.
prior to 7 o'clock. If you have 7 o'clock here on the dais, I know that clock up there is a little bit slower. Uh, we will go ahead and have any closed session announcements by our city attorney. Thank you, Mayor McEachran. There is no uh, reportable action at this time. <laughs> All right. At this time, we'll uh, be led in our invocation uh, by Father Alex Gamino from Holy Innocence Catholic Church and our Pledge of Allegiance by our Police Chief, Captain Don Yoder. Y'all please stand. Almighty and ever-living God, we stand before you in prayer. Look with favor upon the mayor and the members of this city council of our great city of Victorville. Extend your grace on all those here present and give us the joy of life, good health, and prosperity. Lord, send your blessings upon these individuals who have chosen to make laws and decisions for the people of our city. Grant them wisdom and understanding in their pursuits for justice and equality. Guide them as they strive to make decisions with honesty and integrity in accordance with your will. May they have the wisdom to turn adversity into opportunities and to transform the challenges of today into the seeds of which will sprout the growth of tomorrow. Be with us, Lord, as we try to achieve the goals of our nation's Pledge of Allegiance of being one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. Amen. We have a couple presentations tonight, and the first one is a proclamation for Water Awareness Month. And I'm not open that up, and I'm not sure who's going to be here. Oh, there you are, Kathy. And you've got uh, something to show us there. Uh, uh, we have a proclamation for Water Awareness Month. Uh, and then we have a second presentation to a student who I'll call up in a moment uh, who participated in one of our activities for the month. All right. Well, on the proclamation, uh, just we have a lot of whereases as we normally do on proclamations. So I won't read them all, but whereas the goal of the Victorville Water Department is to serve its customers by managing water resources effectively and efficiently, thereby ensuring a safe and reliable water supply for residents and business businesses today and in the future. So with that, I'll present this proclamation uh, for Water Awareness Month. Thank, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, my name is Dana Armstrong. I'm with the Recycling and Conservation Division. That's now part of the Communi Community Services Department with the city. Um, as the mayor read, we have a proclamation. May is Water Awareness Month in Victorville, but it's also Water Awareness Month. Uh, generally around the state of California, a number of water providers do take the month of May to um, make that um, make that proclamation and try to sponsor activities to let people know about the importance of a safe, reliable water supply. Um, in Victorville, we did a couple of activities, one of which was we sponsored an art contest. Uh, we, we do uh, purchase some bottled water, our own bottled water that we donate to community organizations for various events throughout the year. And we thought we would want to try and have the water conservation theme be a part of a, a, a program to involve our, our local uh, schools in an art contest. So we, we sponsored a contest for sixth through twelfth grade students uh, that either lived or attended school in the Victorville Water District. And we handed out um, packets and encouraged participation. We did receive um, 86 entries, and from that we selected a winner. And I would like to um, invite Natalia Alamia 
uh, to come forward. She uh, is an 11th grader from Silverado High School, and she was the winner of our uh, water bottle label contest. Um, thank you. We, we have a, a certificate for you, uh, a, a certificate of recognition. And uh, thank you, and congratulations. And then we also um, we also framed your artwork, and we hope that you will put it up on your wall. It's bragging rights for your family and friends, so we wanted to present that to you. You have it. It's kind of heavy. I don't want you to drop it. Okay. <laughs> And as part of the contest, we said we want you to think about where our water comes from and the importance of conservation, and you just did everything. It was perfect. We said wa our water actually comes from groundwater, supplies that are recharged from runoff from our local mountains. So she had mountains with the water flowing down into the desert, and then she had conservation for the future and the Victorville Water District. So she, you aced it. So congratulations, and thank you very much for participating. One, one final thing, I just want to point out, we do have a great conservation division in the city of Victorville and the Victorville Water District. I, of course, left some flyers out on the uh, credenza out in the lobby, so if you want to know how to conserve water, how to try and save some money on your water bill, please give us a call. We have some great conservation specialists that will come out and meet with you, do a water audit in your house, in your business, your, your outdoor landscaping, and please avail yourself of the great staff and resources that we have available. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kathy. Boy, you picked a good night to promote that. All right. <laughs> we have a full house. Um, we've got another special uh, presentation. If I could have the assistant sheriff, John McMahon, come forward, and he's going to tell us a little bit about this next one. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. On behalf of the Sheriff's Department in the city of Victorville, um, we have a very special presentation today um, for a student who, you can relax, it's okay. A student here in the city of Victorville. Uh, the Sheriff's Department gives out meritorious service awards twice a year, and Mariah Moore was one of the recipients, and she was unable to attend the ceremony we did in Rancho Cucamonga about a month ago. But let me share an incredible story about this young lady. She's 11 years old and attends Eagle Ranch Elementary School. She, unlike, or just like many kids in school, she was a victim of bullying. With support from her school and her parents, she started a club called Kind Campaign Club at her school. The, school, the, the club meets on campus once a week after school, and the objective was to share stories and activities to try to build the awareness for bullying. She took it upon herself to share stories with other kids, bring other kids together. Actually, she even brought some of the suspects, if you will, or the, or the folks that were doing the bullying into her club. They all shared stories. She raised the level of awareness for the folks that were doing the bullying. And she has made a very big impact in the city of Victorville and especially at the Eagle Ranch School. And, and on behalf of the sheriff and our entire department, we have a medal for meritorious service for you, Mariah. We, have a, we also have a certificate of recognition from Supervisor Mitzelfeld for you. And also one from Senator Dutton. And then there's a nice framed, Don will show it to you there, a very nice framed document from the sheriff. And uh, incredible child, thank you very much for what you did raising her. There's mom out there. We, if we have more kids like this in school, we're in great shape for the future, let me tell you. 
Now, don't run off because I think the mayor has something for you as well. Well, Murray, what a great job, and, and thank you for what you've done, and uh, you you deserve all the accolades that you got here tonight. Uh, my hat's off to you for standing up and doing what you did, and on behalf of the City of Vicville, the City Council, I'd like to present you with this certificate of appreciation for everything that you've done. Do it one more time. Turn the certificate upside uh, the right other side. Right side. Well, that's the one. That's the one that'll be framed. <laughs> And Monica, let's make sure the parents get those photos. For, <laughs> I'm sure they, they would greatly enjoy those. All right, thank you for indulging with us on those wonderful presentations. We'll now have the city clerk present the agenda to the council. The City Council of the City of Victorville welcomes the public's participation in tonight's meeting. It is requested that all present please silence cell phones, pagers, and other electronic devices, and that personal conversations be kept to a minimum during the conduct of the meeting. Persons who would wish to address the Council on a specific item which appears on the agenda are requested to complete one of the white speaker cards that have been placed on the agenda table in the council chamber's lobby and give it to the city clerk for the record prior to consideration of the item. The mayor will call upon each individual who has submitted a speaker card when the item comes up for discussion by the city council. The public comment period is the time and place for the general public to address the city council on any item within their jurisdiction that is not on the agenda. It is requested that a speaker card also be submitted to the city clerk for anyone who wishes to address the city council during the public comment period. Pursuant to Government Code Section 54954.3, state law prohibits the council from addressing any issue not previously included on the agenda. The council may receive testimony and set the matter to a subsequent meeting. Comments are to be limited to three minutes per speaker or less as deemed necessary by the mayor depending upon the number of individuals desiring to speak. All communications are to be addressed directly to the city council. Individual comments to staff or members of the audience are not permitted. Individuals who fail to adhere to these guidelines may be asked to yield the floor. Any individual or group who engages in disruptive conduct during the meeting will be removed from the chambers by order of the mayor. Disruptive conduct includes, but is not limited to, addressing the council without being recognized, not addressing the subject before the council, repetitiously addressing the same subject, failing to relinquish the podium when requested to do so, verbal outbursts or comments from the audience. Thank you for your cooperation and adherence to these rules. All documents to be considered for approval at this meeting are before the council. And there are revisions to two items on tonight's agenda. On, appe on appeal hearing item number nine, there is correspondence that has been received from Briggs Law Corporation and also uh, an email received from Kai Talwar. Those are on the dais for the council. And on public hearing item number 11 is a copy of the presentation to be made tonight. Those are all the revisions that I have tonight, Mayor McEachran. All right, thank you. We'll now uh, go into public comment. Uh, section of our agenda. Um, I do have several cards here. Again, I just remind uh, everyone that we limit uh, public comments to three minutes. And I know uh, you do have someone representing most of you here tonight. So uh, he is first on the agenda, uh, Dennis Morris. Mayor, Council, thank you for uh, allowing me to speak. Um, my name is Dennis Morris. I'm with Moses House Ministries. Um, 
Address is 15180 Anna Kappa Road in Victorville. Uh, but however, tonight I re represent the concerned citizens of the high desert. And if I may, I would like um, those wearing a white ribbon uh, to stand while I speak. Oh, I guess that would mean us as well. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Um, I believe there's probably 150 people that wanted to speak tonight, but uh, uh, I'm the chosen one. And uh, so we are here to ask uh, the council to place the concerned citizens of the high desert uh, on the agenda for May 15th uh, to address um, public um, Issues of public safety, health and safety regarding pa Planned Parenthood uh, coming to Victorville. We do not want to do anything to bring a lawsuit upon any individual or the city. That is why we have come out in force tonight to let you know that we the people are asking to be heard. We have petitions that will be sent, uh, plus more of these. Uh, that we plan to present uh, at, that, uh, at that meeting. We will demonstrate issues that we believe to be public health and safety concerns to the residents of the Victor, Victorville and Victor Valley. We are fully aware that the city of Victorville cannot legally uh, prevent any abortion clinic from coming into the city. And we are not going to ask you to do that. However, we believe that what we will ask will be something that the city of Victorville and the cities throughout the high desert will be able to embrace and support. Since you have a lot of to talk about this evening, uh, we're asking that uh, you place uh, this as an agenda item for May 15th. Uh, uh, early in the evening here uh, so that we can leave um, and free some free some seats so people can sit down I um, want you to know that we are praying for you and the city thank you very much Uh, for the benefit of all of you that are here specifically for that, uh, we do not get to the portion of where we add or at request to add agenda items onto uh, future agendas until the end. Um, but this does stream live, so you can go home and watch it if you'd like. It, you could see it tomorrow morning uh, to see whether or not we choose to do that. Um, we may have uh, some legal issues to work through as to whether or not we can do that. but. Um, that is something that uh, we do discuss at the end of the meeting. So I, I don't want you to f uh, feel the need if you do not wish. If you wish to uh, enjoy a council meeting, please stick around. Um, but if you do not wish to, just understand that you can see and uh, what we are doing uh, by the time you get home or even tomorrow morning if you'd like to see what we ultimately do on that. So, uh, But I do appreciate all of you coming out tonight. Mayor, could I ask that we move that ahead of... Schedule. Um, Make a motion. Sure. I motion that we move that ahead of schedule. All we need is consensus on the, the issue of whether we want to adjust. Well, I just don't know if May fifteenth is the right date. Well, and I and I don't know staff. I need and plus I need our city attorney to address. Um, <laughs> What are we what are we what are we agendizing? I, I guess Just a discussion uh, about abortion, a discussion about a particular entity, a discussion about particular uses. Um, 
I don't think that there's a problem with a consensus of us all to put it on a future agenda. What I need, I think, and what you need is to know exactly what we want to discuss. Well, I, I would like to, to agendize um, concerns uh, regarding um, public safety, regarding um, the children and minors in the city of Victorville. And um, if we could put that on for discussion. I, that's that's such a huge topic. Are, are we talking about the Planned Parenthood? Um, that that the Planned Parenthood um, may be providing a venue that is unsafe for minors in our city. So what we want to talk about is the Planned Parenthood decision, not safety for kids generally around the um, city. Safety for the children um, as far as uh, Planned Parenthood providing um, contraceptives or, or things that um, uh, these residents feel that are um, unsafe and could, you know, promote STDs or um, other dangerous situations. You know, I mean, for uh, normally for this council, we have this policy that we have to have a consensus. I don't think that any of us up here uh, have a problem with putting that on the agenda. I just think I want to be clear and I think our city attorney wants us to be clear as to what it is we are agendizing. Um, if it's public safety for children, then that's the overall topic. Does Planned Parenthood come into that discussion? I'm sure it does. So, yeah, I think you have to be cautious as to how you agendize the item. Um, why the media isn't? <laughs> <laughs> Congress isn't. That certainly is true, and I don't have any problem having a discussion about the thoughts and opinions of the council. The concern I have is if the item that was previously before the Planning Commission comes to this body as an appeal, which we don't know yet if it will or will not, then you have to sit here as an unbiased body to try and determine that appeal. If you can't do that, then the appellant is not going to have, or at least will have an argument that they have not been afforded due process, and it may then create some liability for the city. Uh, their, revenue, their avenue at that point will be go to, to go to court and say I wasn't able to get a fair hearing before this council because it was already predetermined and there was a bias given on the council. If it can be structured in such a way as to not in any way impact upon what the Planning Commission has done, uh, having a just general discussion about it, I don't see that as being problematic. Oh, we're, we're not going to discuss like zoning, uh, but I, th I think that the people are requesting to have an opportunity to present to the council some concerns that they have regarding safety of, of minors and Planned Parenthood um, um, services that they're offering. Um, as far as, as zoning um, and all of that is it, just separate. Right. And that, that to have a general discussion is appropriate. The only concern is I can see that the representatives from Planned Parenthood at some point are going to argue that you are not an unbiased uh, Right, and group. I think that we could argue back that it's not us that's requesting this. It's 150 people that came here tonight, and our job as, as council members are to listen to our constituents, and that's exactly what we're doing. Certainly. <laughs> Now, the, the public comment section of our agenda provides for that very thing. Exactly. Every single meeting. Anybody can come and speak on any subject they want to speak to this council about, period. If it's children's safety, Planned Parenthood, uh, um, STDs, uh, illegal, whatever. I mean, we, we listen to just about every opinion that anybody wants to bring to us doesn't have to be agendized for you to come and speak your mind. And you don't have to ask our approval. That's what public comment is for. Well, I agree with that um, completely. But when we have 150 people, we could be here till next week. Yeah, that's right. So if we could just agendize it and have one um, presentation that's going to represent all of their concerns, I think that would be easier for us. Mr. Mayor, if it pleases the council, uh, you could direct staff and the attorney to work with Dennis. I know Dennis very well. Um, on coming up with an appropriate date and time uh, to have sort of an extended public comment period to address specifically issues uh, that, that they brought up tonight. Um, if just throwing well, out and there. Perhaps a uh, with such a topic like this and with so many people here, um, maybe scheduling a special council meeting. It should uh, be a workshop. It could be a special meeting a or a workshop is, is where I was kind of headed with that, yeah. Um, because uh, 
I don't know of anybody who has not have a biased opinion about Planned Parenthood one way or the other out there. So I, I, I don't know how you can sit up here and say that this council is biased one way or the other because there's no one in this nation that doesn't have an opinion about Planned Parenthood. Um, but I would, I, as long as the council is agreeable with that, let's have our city manager work with Dennis to get something scheduled uh, that's appropriate. Maybe not on a regular council night, but maybe a special meeting that this is the only topic we discuss. Is that okay? Agreeable? Agreeable. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, we thank you for your indulgence. Uh, uh, I think it was a, a good idea that we at least uh, discuss that so you can all leave and Thank you to my colleague here, because <laughs> um, well, we we don't want you got dinner to go home to, right? You you have kids. You this is um, what, this is what life is about. So <laughs> being in a council meeting is not given that framework. Let's let's don't worry about having one person speak for everybody. We'll sit here until you're tired of talking. <laughs> I mean, I I'll be here. And, and the same people are welcome to speak if there's an appeal as well. Yeah. And, and we invite you to show up if, if and when it, the uh, Planning Commission decision would get appealed. Yeah, and as far as I know, uh, Mr. Webb, or they have not submitted at this point in time? Okay. Uh, there, and that's a misconception that's gone on out there. At this point in time, they have not even submitted to the Planning Department. Uh, we don't know if they will. Um, but that's not to say we can't have this discussion because it could be any organization. It doesn't necessarily have to be Planned Parenthood. Um, I know you all are against abortion, and that's why you're here. So, Just one point of clarification. As an existing site, it goes before the zoning administrator. That is then appealable to the Planning Commission, which their decision is then appealable to this body. Right. And, and, not, and they have not submitted yet. Right. And I've all already promised uh, you all publicly that um, the zoning administrator's decision, although administrative, will be appealed to the Planning Commission by me personally. So um, you know, I think it needs to go through the full process. That's the right thing for it to do. Um, so with that, I think what we're going to pl plan on doing, um, Dennis, I imagine you have everybody's contact info in here pretty much. Um, you, will you be the point of, point of contact to make sure that they know when we do have a special workshop? It will be in the paper. It will be publicly noticed. We'll, we'll make sure that everyone knows that we possibly can. And if, and if we don't get it out to you, I'm sure that Dennis will. So, again, thank you all for being here tonight in support of, uh, support of life. Yeah, they they'll be public. Yeah, they, they'll be public. I got lots of pictures. I walked around the room. You're welcome. God bless you. Thank you. No. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you, ladies. Thank you for coming. God bless you. House rocks. <laughs> you too. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we still have the rest of our meeting to get through, so if I could ask you to uh, move out into the hallway um, so we can continue. To move on. I know it. I know it's yeah. It's kind of <laughs> resolution. I would have to bifurcate the resolution a little bit. Uh, the next card I have is Glenn Craig.
Uh -huh. Okay, Glenn had the same concern, so I'm assuming that he's left. Dorothy Miller. And Norm, you're right after her, so if you want to come on down. Hello, Mayor and Council members. I wish they all were here for tonight. Okay, I have several things I wanted to talk about. We keep asking the same question over and over and over, and we've gotten answers about the city attorney, the pay that the other cities get. Now this has all been answered many a times and the RDA employees, where did they go? They all were put back in to the city in different departments. But we keep asking the same question. Uh, now we want our agenda early. That has been for years. Everybody could do their agenda. But now all of a sudden one person can't do their agenda? Uh, I don't think they really do it anyway. I think somebody else does it for them, and they must not have the time to do it for them. Then I want to know, why can't we get the information from the grand jury? Is that your cell phone going off? Anyway, uh, the grand jury, why can't we get that information out to the people? The people want to know what really went on. We have no idea. We have to wait till June. I know the city knows, but we don't know. That's not fair to the people. The change in the water bill. People that's online could not get their bills. We've changed the water bill numbers. We've done all kinds of things. So people that's out of town can't pay their water bill until they get the information in the mail. And this is not right. It should have been set up ahead of time. It should have been set up ahead of time so the people know how to pay their bill, especially online, because that is not right. And I just, I'm just really fed up with asking the same question over and over and over again. Let's go on. Let's move on forward with the city. Don't keep asking the same question over and over and over. Let's move it forward. Thank you. Thank you. Norm? You're trying to speed things up, aren't you? Mr. Mayor, council members, uh, I'm going to ask to uh, wait till next uh, meeting to do this because I had some things to say and there's not enough uh, council members here. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Sharon Richards. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. My name is Sharon Richards. I'm from the Victorville Senior Club, and I'm here not to ask for anything or complain about anything. I'm here to say thank you. Uh, thanks to the City Council and uh, uh, getting us an HCD grant. I, I'm so excited. I can hardly stand it. Uh, we're going to get a new roof and some new doors on our old, old building. And I just want to let you know how much we appreciate that. And everyone is just thrilled to death. And thank you, thank you very much. And Angela, you got us started on this. She came and spoke at our club and, and led me in the right direction to get this grant going. And I just really thank you very much. We all thank you. Thank you. Uh, Raymond Herrera. Good evening, Mayor. Good evening, Angela. Good evening, City Council. My name is Raymond Herrera, President and Founder of We the People, California's Crusader. I, I kind of miss Rudolfo and Vicky and the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. Maybe they're seeing what everybody's talking about. The celebration of Cinco de Mayo on American soil is an insult to the American people, especially to people such as I. I don't wave no Mexican flag. I don't believe in, you know, the Mexican culture, their heritage, their customs, their make-believe mystical battles with glory. 
I am an American, and I celebrate America 24-7 from the cradle to the grave, the American creed. I am a disciple of that. Rudy is not here. I think I know why he's not here. And people want to look at the grand jury and the misdealings of this city in the past. Rudy's right embroiled right in the center of it. Vicky's no longer with the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. Corruption gets you nowhere, Mayor. I say that to Rudy, not to you, of course. But um, I'm asking the American people to wake up. We don't celebrate May 5th. We don't fly Mexican flags. We are the American people, and I'm inviting you to come out and join me at 10 o'clock in front of the college this Saturday and celebrate Madison, Jefferson, Washington. Celebrate our fathers, our mothers, anything but the Mexican culture. And furthermore, Mayor, I, I kind of resent the fact that the city used the you know, public works yard to store signs for the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, used city trucks to drive them out and post them on the city on the post. That's the misuse of our funds. It's misdirected. And I call out to the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce to join the rest of the American people. You don't have to be tribal to be heard. We are one people, Amer American. And all this innuendo and falsehoods that are going around about Cinco de Mayo, multiculturalism, diversity, put it on a boat, slow boat to China. The American people invented multiculturalism and diversity, and it's American. It's not Mexican. It's not African. It's not Indian. It's not anything. We are one people. And I'm asking you, Mayor, that let this be the last time that this city either sponsors or helps or aids in the celebration of an invading force on the American people, on American soil, by your American spine. Robin? My name's Robin Vidston, and I'm also with We the People. And I'm also um, going to be at the event Saturday with Mr. Herrera. This city is sponsoring a Cinco de Mayo event, celebrating a Mexican holiday at taxpayers' expense. As Mr. Herrera stated, our public work trucks, uh, hardware storage has all been done at the expense of the American taxpayer. And uh, we will be there at no charge to taxpayers in front of the event with our American flags at 10 a.m. this Saturday, celebrating America, not N not Cinco de Mayo. And uh, we both are members of the border sheriffs. That's uh, the sheriffs down on the Texas-Arizona border. And we get the blog of the narcos out of Mexico. Uh, the Mexican media and, of course, the U.S. media rarely covers the bloodbath that goes on every single day at the hands of the drug cartel in Mexico. In the last six years, over 50,000 Mexicans have been executed, killed, murdered by the drug cartels. And uh, just within the last, last couple of weeks on the blog, they talked about a town clerk in um, Guero who was running for city council. He was executed in his car in front of city hall. Uh, there was a lieutenant colonel, retired Mexican lieutenant colonel, and he had just been assigned to be a public deputy safety um, for the state of Zamora. And he was on his way home, ambushed, killed by the drug cartel. Uh, very few reporters, if they write about the drug cartel in Mexico, associate their name with the writing. The blog that we get is anonymous. No one knows who's writing it. Uh, there was a reporter in Veracruz, her name was Regina Jimenez. She had been openly writing about the drug cartel, and just this week uh, she was um, unspeakably tortured in her home and killed by the drug cartel. Uh, we also uh, got a report of two um, young men decapitated, mutilated, on and on. We get these reports. How do we reconcile this with this city using our tax dollars to celebrate 
another country, Mexico's heritage. And um, again, uh, the drug cartels are operating, according to the Department of Justice, in w over 1,000 U.S. cities. Recently, just in Redlands, there was the drug bust, and that had fingers of drug cartel members up here in the high desert. So again, um, we're very disappointed this city's logo is all over the Cinco de Mayo signs in town. You're using taxpayer dollars to put this event on. Join us with an American flag in front of the event for free and celebrate America this Saturday, not Cinco de Mayo. All right. <clears throat> Thank you. That is the uh, all the public comment cards I have. Uh, so we will now move into the rest of our agenda. Under the Library Board of Trustees, there were no items at the time of posting. Uh, neither were there any items at the time of posting under Southern California Logistics Rail Authority. Under the Southern California Logistics Airport Authority, uh, we have a request to ratify an amendment to the contract with DCS testing and equipment for SCLA hangar 676 fire suppression repairs and approve an additional appropriation in the amount of $79,686 for the additional work needed. Motion by Councilmember Kennedy, second by Councilmember Vias. Motion carries with Mayor Pro Tem Cabrales and Councilmember Rothschild absent. Uh, as the successor agency to the redevelopment agency, agenda item number six, this is a request to adopt the recognized obligation payment schedule, or RRops and successor agency administrative budget for July 1st to December 31st, 2012, and approve an additional appropriation in the amount of $50,793,711.53 as set forth in resolution R-SA-12003. Motion by Council Member Kennedy, second by Mayor McEachran. Uh, I would ask the City Attorney's direction on this item, since there are only three Council Members um, present in voting. And this is an item with an additional appropriation. There are two yes votes and one no vote. The, uh, since this is a, is a new budgetary item, it cannot pass without getting three votes. Um, and given, I think, the importance of having the um, the actual recognized obligation payment schedule adopted, I'd ask if the council would consider bifurcating the item and not approve the budgetary portion of it, but approve the submittal of the recognized obligation schedule. If you'd be willing to consider that, if not, the item will fail at this time and would have to be re-agendized. We have a, a Potential May, I think it's um, 15th deadline. It's unclear under AB 26 where that deadline is coming from, but the Department of Finance seems to deem that they would like to have the recognized obligation schedule for the second part of the year adopted and submitted to the Oversight Board and seek that approval by that time. So, you need a motion to bifurcate? I need a motion to bifurcate if the Council is willing to do that. Um, the budget item obviously has failed uh, to consider forwarding the uh, recognized obligation schedule by itself to the Oversight Committee. I need a motion. Yeah. I'll make the motion. I'll second. So since uh, this is not something we have formally on our screen, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Opposed. Thank you. So that allows for us to now Just vote. submit that without any budgetary authority. You have not authorized any budgetary, budgetary authority at this point, but you can submit the uh, recognized obligation schedule. Okay. So the budget, uh, budget, budget portion of this will come back to Let's us? come back at a different time. Okay. All right. Uh, under the uh, Joint Powers Financing Authority, there were no items at the time of posting. Under the Victor, did, did, oh, that, did that motion constitute approval of the it ROPS? Voted, it was voted on to submit. The, okay. the motion was to submit the ROPS. Okay. Uh, Victorville Water District, we do have consent calendar.
Motion by Council Member Baez, second by Council Member Kennedy. Motion carries with Mayor Pro Tem Cabriales and Council Member Rothschild absent. City Council performing housing functions of its former redevelopment agency. Uh, agenda item number eight requests to one, award a contract to American Green Developers Inc. of Victorville, California for the rehabilitation of NSP property located at 15098 Laurelwood Place and two, designate the assistant city manager as the authorized <coughs> signer of all related transaction documents in the amount of $44,583. Motion by Council Member Kennedy, second by Mayor McEachern. Motion carries with Mayor Pro Tem Cabrales absent, Council Member Rothschild absent, and Council Member Vias voting no. Moving on to the City Council, we do have an appeal hearing. This is an appeal hearing to hear arguments for and against granting or denying Site Plan PLN 11-00002 <coughs> located at the southeast corner of Roy Rogers Drive in Amargosa Road, uh, known as Target, as set forth in Resolution 12-019A, denying or Resolution number 12-019B, approving. Um, at this time, I'll open the public hearing on agenda item number nine. Do we have the appellant here? All right, I have two other cards. I have, I'm sorry, I cannot read this card, but it is the applicant. Um, you'll have to forgive me. <laughs> I, I almost, I almost, it's almost like my writing, but anyway. <laughs> apologize for my writing. I'm guessing you're looking at one that says applicant Richard Schulman? Yeah, that's it, that's it. Uh, Honorable Mayor McEachern, mayors of the members of the City Council, Richard Schulman on behalf of the applicant Civic Rogers LLC. Um, I've read the staff report that you've, you have, uh, it's very thorough. I'm not here to talk about the project. I just want to reassure you that the last minute document dump that you received from the appellant, Corey Briggs Law Firm, uh, has no merit. Um, most of it raises factual issues that are already addressed in the record. Some of them address legal issues that don't even exist. For example, if you read the list, one of the items in his list is that your findings aren't complete. Well, you haven't actually made findings yet. You don't do that until you actually approve the item. Uh, the only other item that I want to address very briefly was the uh, catch-all condition that staff raised. Uh, it's an interesting concept. Uh, the, I'm not sure it's necessary here because the project already complies with all the laws. Uh, that having been said, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. And we also have a David. Is it's okay? <laughs> Sorry. And difficult to that hard. My grandkids could even pronounce it. <laughs> uh, my name is Dave Israelski. Uh, I'm here to speak uh, against um, this resolution. I've been managing the uh, shops for the, at the Target Center on Palmdale Road for the last 18 years, and we're very concerned about the impact to the tenants if Target moves. We're also concerned about the proliferation of of empty big boxes along Palmdale Boulevard. We already have a, a Ralph's gone and a Rite Aid gone, and with Target gone, we're, we're just going to continue the the, uh, the blight, uh, commercial blight from 7th Street all the way down Palmdale Boulevard. I don't think that's the legacy that the council would like to have for the city. Um, so we're urging you to, to vote against this resolution. However, if you vote for it, we, we think you ought to condition it that Target provide another tenant before they move, because otherwise, with all the, the vacant big boxes in Victorville, that space could be empty for a long time, and our tenants would suffer uh, tremendously. Thank you. All right, that's all the cards I have under uh, under this uh, agenda item number nine on the appeal hearing. And 
there's no one else, I'll go ahead and close the hearing on this and return it to the council for a decision. Mr. Mayor, I have a question. Um, <clears throat> we have a lawsuit from the Briggs Law Corporation representing an organization called Grow Victorville Smart. Does anybody know who that organization is or who's a part of that? Or are there any? Victor, I've never heard of it before. Nobody knows anything about Grow Victorville Smart. Hmm. Bill, you have some light to shed on this. Not much, <laughs> uh, unfortunately. Uh, we've had several lawsuits from uh, Mr. Briggs representing that organization. No one from that organization has ever come forward. So we, we don't know who they are, but our understanding is that, um, that he is required to have people in that organization if he so states. We have no way of knowing who they are, though. At such time as this ever proceeds to litigation, if it does, then he will have to identify an individual. Um, oftentimes it'd be what they call, quote, a straw man person, but there needs to be a concerned citizen that has standing, and we would challenge this on the basis of standing to ensure that there was somebody that has legitimate rights. Thank you. I also want to just comment uh, on the second speaker. I, I share your concern about empty big box stores. I think everybody in this community Everybody on this council would share that concern. Um, having said that, I don't think it's the duty of this council or any governmental entity to, to, to tell a business where they can and cannot locate. I'm a landlord. Um, I'm also a tenant. Um, I, no, no tenant of mine has ever called me and, or come to the council, or, and I've never gone to the council and asked them to tell a tenant that they can't move. I, you know, that's the point that I just, I can't, I share your concern. I can't vote against this for that reason. I, I just can't. And I would, I would love to see Target do something to, uh, something, whatever they can do about that space, but, if they don't have a duty to, their duty is to, you know, earn a return for their shareholders. And that's just a fact of life. Does Target own that building? Apparently not. Do they own that building? Well, they do. Well, then they have every interest in bringing a tenant in. Uh -huh. um, yeah, I was thinking that maybe, you know, to, to require it might be a bit strong, but maybe if um, somebody in planning could talk to them about it um, and make sure it doesn't stay empty because we, we are concerned about the other tenants in there. Sure. We can definitely do that. We, we've done so and we followed up with Walmart uh, when they built the Dunias, as they're building the Dunias store. We're doing all that we can to assist them um, in, in leasing that out and encouraging to bring a reputable, reputable commercial business in and we will definitely do the same with Target. <clears throat> and I think it's important to point out uh, Victorville's been very successful in doing just that. Look at Gottschalk's. We have Macy's coming in there. Uh, look at the former Mervins. Forever 21 went in there. Now we've got J.C. Penney expanding in there. The mall is going to completely do, redo the, the frontage of, of their facility. Uh, when, Cir when we lost Circuit City, Best Buy decided, you know what, we want to downsize, so they moved over to that facility. Now we have Hobby Lobby, which my wife went over to today, and I will tell you, <laughs> um, I'm worried about that place. Um, uh, but we've been successful in bringing in additional retail establishments uh, because we have the population base here to support it. So um, I think we will work towards that, work with uh, Target to encourage them to do uh, exactly that and finding a tenant. Requiring them to do that, though, as a condition of approval is not something that this city or uh, I'm sure any city has ever done, and I, I think we'd be treading on uh, uh, some shady legal ground there. That would be probably violate property owners' property rights. Yeah. All right, uh, so it is back before the council for a decision. Okay, so voting yes on this means that we want the target that we're approving the the uh, well you're uh, you if you're denying the appeal then it would be resolution 12-019a oh, oh you, you no. would move that resolution oh i'm sorry 
Let's make sure we're voting on the right thing. Yeah. <laughs> you would like to deny the appeal, which would allow the uh, Planning Commission's approval to stand. And the appeal is the one filed by the litigant Corey Briggs on behalf of the entities that we don't know. But so if we want the Planning Commission decision to stand, our motion is to deny the appeal. The appeal. And, and so by voting yes, that means we're ignoring the, the guy that wants to sue us, right? But what? We're ignoring the guy that wants to sue us, right? We're and that we're yes. going to move forward with, with building this target. That is correct, if okay. you vote for Resolution A. And I assume that is your vote. My motion. Okay. Motion by Council Member Kennedy, second by Council Member Vias. Motion carries with Mayor Pro Tem Cabrales and Mayor, or excuse me, Council Member Rothschild absent. All right, uh, moving on to agenda item number 10. This is a public hearing called to hear arguments for and against granting a certificate of public convenience and necessity in adopting resolution 12-018. I'll go ahead and open the public hearing on agenda item number 10. Anyone wishing to address the council on that item? All right, seeing no one, I'll close the public hearing and return it to the council. Motion by Council Member Vias, second by Council Member Kennedy. Motion carries with Mayor Pro Tem Cabrales and Council Member Rothschild absent. All right, agenda item number 11 is a public hearing call to uh, one, receive citizen and agency comments regarding uh, the draft fiscal year 2012-2013 annual action plan and 2012 through 2016 consolidated plan. Approve and adopt the plans as presented for submittal to the Department of Housing and Urban Development, HUD, and three, authorize city manager to execute all necessary documents for submittal to HUD related to fiscal year 2012 through 2013 for $1,228,675. Um, this is a public hearing, so I'll open the public hearing on agenda item number 11. I do have one card, Susie Hollenbeck. Mayor McEachern, a card hasn't been submitted, but I believe this is the consultant that is going to do a brief presentation on this item first. Oh, okay. Um, just a couple of minutes. Um, uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk about the three uh, reports that we are um, presenting before you tonight. It's the five-year consolidated plan and the one-year action plan, as well as the analysis of impediments to fair housing choice. The city of Victorville receives um, CDBG grants, community development block grants directly from HUD annually. Um, in order to receive that funding, the city has to do a five-year consolidated plan that um, identifies the needs in the community and then set the priority what you're going to do in the next five years, how you're going to plan on spending the funding. And then in conjunction to that, you do a one-year action plan annually um, to look at how much money you're going to um, how you're going to allocate the funding. As we all kind of recognize in the last couple of years, funding has substantially uh, decreased for, for a lot of communities. In the city of Victorville, you're actually doing fine, um, better than some other communities. Um, uh, in California and in the nation, you, your funding did not decrease as drastically to compared to some other communities. But over the f next five years, when we're looking at the needs, we do keep that in mind that there are more needs than you have funding to address, and therefore setting priorities priorities are important, and that's being set in the consolidated plan. Now, as part of receiving the funding, there is also something uh, that you certified and you sign a certification as a city council, you sign a certification that you will be actively furthering fair housing opportunities in your community. By signing that certification commits the city to um, doing something called the analysis of impediments to fair housing choice um, and to maintain fair housing records as, long as 
um, as well as to provide fair housing services. Um, the analysis of impediments to fair housing choice is required every five years. We need to look at the market conditions, the public regulations and policies and programs in place in the city, whether you're promoting um, fair housing, how you're trying to do to mitigate fair housing um, issues. Because of the economy, because of the recession, um, there are actually more fair housing issues servicing um, in, in, in all the communities throughout California because there are a lot of people, uh, particularly homeowners, that are renting their homes to, um, to other people rather than living in, in the homes themselves. So that kind of um, um, creates some uh, potential issues because these homeowners are not particularly aware of fair housing at um, policies or rules and regulations, so more outreach and education is needed. So that's something that we kind of um, identify that's different than before. Um, but with that, um, we'll be happy to answer any questions you may have on, on the reports. So. Susie? You know, let me ask one question, I, and I, I do enough work with HUD funding sources in my profession that I that I know they've got volumes and volumes and volumes of regulations and compliance issues. Right. Have we ever had compliance uh, failures or compliance deficiencies in the way we have managed HUD projects here? Well, I'm not the your CDBG and program manager. I think that's probably a better question for the city staff to answer. So. I hope this is a short answer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I was, um, can you repeat the question? I didn't hear. Well, my question was about HUD regulations. Mm -hmm. it's, they're, they're extensive. How are we doing? Uh, did we have any compliance problems with our HUD? No, program? we have, have not had any compliance issues at all. However, HUD will be here next week. Yeah. They will be spending a week with us uh, to go over all of our files back to 2010. And in fact, um, they have asked for 1999 files, which we don't have. We only go back to 2005 as required by um, the retention guidelines. So, but we have not had and we don't anticipate that we will have any. When you say um, issues, what, what were you referring to? Well, uh, HUD has uh, a, a number of compliance requirements anytime they, they put grant funds out, like all federal agencies do. And uh, there are very specific compliance requirements dealing with individual funds and CFDA numbers, but there are also internal control requirements and uh, that's part of our annual audit, but I'm also curious if we've ever had any any issues raised by HUD itself. We have not. Oh, okay. Um, and th this is also for other things, for as asbestos to keep the kids safe and, and, and many other uh, grant obligations when I was reading in here as far as helping like the senior center and and, and different things to help the Absolutely. community. There is a percentage of the funds, up to 15%, that it's for a, very, a variety of uh, um, programs like seniors mm -hmm. and Meals on Wheels and domestic violence and so on. Uh, but a good portion of that is also for housing-related activities, um, as we were just mentioning. It's kind of uh, difficult because there's some, some things in here that um, I don't, agree and, and support with, but there's so much good that it does the community, so I feel I need to support it, and then individually you'll see me vote no, so. <clears throat> Susie, while you're coming up, I have a question for our city attorney. Um, you know, when CDBG grants have come before this council, I have recused myself, Councilmember Kennedy has recused himself. Um, that's not so much what this is about, but overarching, it's in the report. Do we have a problem there? I don't believe so. If you're just approving the, the uh, submittal of the report at this point in time, you're not voting. I don't think you're voting on individual We're not allocations voting to, of HUD funds okay. at this point. I just so. want, to, I want to be clear because in the report, it actually calls out certain agencies that, right. you know, you, I you, represent, I'm sure, Councilmember Kennedy represents, and I. Right. And you, you, have recused, you have previously recused yourself from voting on the allocation of funds to those various entities. That would be where there potentially could be a conflict. This is just the approval of the overall report. Submitting. Okay. All right. Susie? After getting my exercise for the night, I basically. <laughs> 
Honorable Mayor and City Council members, I just wanted to thank you for your vote of confidence by uh, actually giving us the CDBG amount that we asked for is 25000 and that you went ahead and voted on that for us at the homeless shelter, High Desert Homeless Services, who I represent. And, uh, and the funds can be very much used there at the shelter, and we try to, to save money as much as we can. And, um, and when we get the confidence that the city of Victorville has voted us by giving us the amount we, we asked for, it just thrills me to death. Uh, and I believe that you all know um, what a wonderful uh, job we're doing in this community to help homeless people. And um, again, I invite you, any of you, to come over and see what we do firsthand. If you ever get a chance, stop by, ask for me, I'll give you a tour. Because once you see it, and it's not um, just something you hear about all the time, but you actually see it and see the things that we do, you can see that we're a launch pad, not a crash pad, and we get help a lot of people get on their feet in this community. But thank you very much, I appreciate it. I'd also like to note that the city of Victorville is the only city in the surrounding area that is providing for a homeless shelter and, and making those those um, accommodations. So I hope that the other cities will eventually do something about it and, and start taking care of their homeless because it's getting really difficult for Victorville. All right, that's all the uh, cards I have on agenda item number 11. So I'll close the public hearing and return it to the council for a decision. Motion by Council Member Kennedy, second by Council Member Vias. Motion carries with Mayor Pro Tem Cabrales and Council Member Rothschild absent. Agenda item number 12 is our consent calendar. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to pull item J. Um, I'd like to pull A. <laughs> okay. Uh, could we all entertain a motion for the adoption of the consent calendar, which would be items B through I? Motion by Council Member Kennedy, second by Council Member Vias. Council Member Vias, thank you very much. Motion carries with Mayor Pro Tem Cabrales and Council Member Rothschild absent. All right, we'll deal 12A first. I just wanted to point out that um, we're spending again 133000 on the city attorney for this two week period. Motion by Council Member Kennedy, second by Mayor McEachern. Motion carries with Mayor Pro Tem Cabrales and Council Member Rothschild absent and Council Member Vias voting no. And we'll go to 12J. Yeah, this, this is uh, an information item and it doesn't require anything except, I suppose, filing. We're not being asked to approve it. It's the, the uh, comparative study staff did on uh, legal fees in the city and and it was an attempt to compare the legal fees we're paying in Victorville, uh, not just to our city attorney, but to all the law firms that we use, and compare that to other cities of uh, comparable makeup, not strictly comparable size, but uh, with similar functions. Uh, it'd be hard to find a city with 115,000 people that has an RDA, uh, a base closure airport, not just a little municipal airport, an airport that uh, was converted and has the scope of operations that SCLA has, uh, a, a municipal utility service, uh, a water district. Uh, so it was difficult to find um, another city that's truly comparable. What the facts tell us, though, the, the, and, and I think the report makes it fairly clear, is that our city attorney is not the cheapest and by far is not the most expensive, is somewhere 
in the middle. Um, as a professional in practice for over four years, I've always determined that I didn't want to be the cheapest. I also didn't want to be the most expensive. I want to be in a reasonable range in the middle, and I want people to choose me based on the quality of my work. And uh, I think our decision to not go out and look for other attorneys is based at least on a majority view that the firm of Green, DeBortnowski, and Quintanilla has been, uh, the quality of the work has been exceptional, extraordinary, considering the 20 plus years they've been advising the city on the multitude of uh, issues that have come before this council over the last 20, 25 years. So uh, even though I, I, I recognize that Council Member Baez is, would like to make a change, uh, but what I want to, everybody to understand is the, the fees we pay are not unusual. They're not out of line. They're certainly not excessive. Uh, they're based on the complexity of the city, the litigation that comes at us from directions that we cannot control, uh, and from decisions that this council has made to get involved in certain kinds of activities. Uh, my opinion and the opinion of certainly the four of us is that that job they've done has been uh, exceptional. And uh, I don't have any desire to look for other counsel. Well, that's his opinion, but exceptional to me is, is it's been exceptionally bad. Uh, legal advice that the city has obtained. That's why we're in so much trouble with so many investigations. So I disagree. The only thing I have to say is if I was a city attorney, I'd be wanting to work for Paso Robles. $23.12 per capita? Per, wow. Per uh, citizen, I guess. Per citizen? That's uh, three over three, almost four times the rate we're paying right now. So anyway, uh, this issue is before the council. This is just to, to, to approve the consent calendar for item J? Yes. Motion by Mayor McEquin, second by Council Member Kennedy. Motion carries with Mayor Pro Tem Cabrales, Council Member Rothschild absent, and Council Member Vias voting no. All right, moving on to written communications, uh, agenda item number 13. This is a request to approve a consultant professional services standard provider agreement with Albert Grover and Associates for traffic engineering services in the amount not to exceed $25,000. Motion by Council Member Kennedy, second by Mayor McEachern. <laughs> Motion carries with Mayor Pro Tem Cabrales and Council Member Rothschild absent. Then item number 14 is request to approve the legal retainer agreement to retain Kaufman, Dolovich, Veluk, and Gonzo to represent the city of Victorville in certain eminent domain matters pertaining to the La Mesa Nisqually Interchange Project. Um, just a comment um, for general information. We're entering in this agreement because a former employee of Green, DeBorgnowski, and Quintanilla, uh, who's been handling much of the litigation, has left that firm and gone to this firm. And this is a way of retaining her services and any litigation that we're going to be faced with on that interchange. That's correct. She was the lead attorney on these litigation matters. They are close to being wrapped up, and it would be a disadvantage to the city, I think, to change horses. She will uh, work closely with our firm. She has agreed to stay at the rates that we charge, which are typically below what typical private firms would charge, significantly lower. Uh, and it's just to keep her uh, as lead counsel, and our associates will continue to work with her. Uh, to keep the costs at a minimum. Uh, like I said, we hope to wrap all of these up relatively quickly. Motion by Council Member Kennedy, second by Mayor McEachern.
Motion carries with Mayor Pro Tem Cabriales and Council Member Rothschild absent and Council Member Vias voting no. And item number 15 is request to approve amendment number five to the General Services Provider Standard Agreement with Astrum Utility Services, adding two additional one year option periods to the agreement. Uh, why, why aren't we going out for RFP on this one? This is a highly specialized uh, professional service uh, that has been very successful for our electric utility, uh, turning it from uh, essentially uh, barely breaking even to making a significant revenue over expenditure, or if we were a private business, that would be called profit. Um, at this point in time, uh, we believe it wise to uh, extend this agreement uh, and keep the, the, good, the good work rolling. Um, it, this would be a, a two-year extension, and uh, at this time we don't believe that there's uh, any uh, need to do an RFP and also uh, the development of an RFP at this time would be very difficult considering the highly specialized uh, service uh, that we would have to try to first describe and then evaluate. How long has this um, contract been awarded to this company? Uh, page 652 of your agenda says August of 2009 was when Astrum began providing these services. There's actually a chart in, in the agenda that shows the, the 910 revenue over uh, expenses. Uh, it's very, very minor uh, difference there, uh, basically breaking even. 2010, 11, and 11, 12 both have significantly increased in, in revenue with the expenses only going up very slightly. Uh, that is precisely the reason why we believe that it, it's wise to to continue with this contract at this point. Thank you. Motion by Council Member Kennedy, second by Council Member Vias. Motion carries with Mayor Pro Tem Cabriales and Council Member Rothschild absent. Agenda item number 16 is discussion and possible action to direct staff to provide a spreadsheet that shows which events the city sponsors and or supports and those it does not. Uh, I know this was at the request of Council Member Vias. Um, it doesn't need to say the ones that it does not. It just, which one, I mean, I'm trying to, I get a lot of um, complaints and we hear um, Mr. Herrera um, complaining um, regarding that we're always helping Cinco de Mayo and then Rudy's on the council and it you know it, 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 it Rudy's on the Hispanic Chamber and his wife you know either is or on there and or was on there um, so I just would you know like to yeah, thank you for that clarification we got a little bit concerned with <laughs> with the way it was phrased as uh -huh. to how we could possibly list the number of events that we uh -huh. do not support so right. um, I, I would ask uh, this is actually an item that I've already seen a draft of I think we can have it uh, to you guys very soon uh, and it, that could either come uh, we've had a couple items on the agenda tonight that we put on consent calendar guessing that's where the council might want to see it uh, we can do that in two weeks or we can submit it as simply a memo to the city council uh, probably as early as, as as late this week or early next week it, it, it's completely up to the council it wouldn't be an item that uh, would be anything you'd be voting on it would be informational only uh, unless you so chose to to give counts or give the staff direction on specific events that that, that will appear on there Maybe just as a, a staff report, and then if there's concern, I'll bring it up again. Yeah, I would defer to you. Yeah, we've heard so much discussion about all the things allegedly that we support and put taxpayer money into. I'd like to know if any of that's true or exactly what is true. So that we're clear with our constituents okay. and how to respond. Okay, it'll be on consent in two weeks then. Okay. So uh, with respect to that item, do we need to vote to put it on the next agenda? Is that what you'd be looking for. Can I add one more thing on there is also is, is how do we determine what events we're going to support? Maybe. I, so I can actually answer that right now. There's okay. there's a, a litany of events that we've historically uh, sponsored in the past, actually given cash money to. Um, and uh, over the last three years, uh, all of those events we have stopped sponsoring in, in, in cash. Uh, we do provide some in-kind services to a lot of different events. 
uh, throughout the city. Um, and that has just sort of remained uh, because we've, and I hate this in government, but we've always done it, uh, and we haven't had any direction to stop supporting events in particular. So, um, you know, I'm anxious to get the information to the council. Uh, it will be enlightening as far as when you start counting up the, the hourly rate uh, times the number of hours. Uh, it, some of these events do cost the city uh, a certain amount of money. Uh, however, uh, I must caution you that this is not you know, new dollars. These are sunk costs. These are employees who are going to be paid, uh, and they're pulled off of other duties to, to provide this, this level of support. We'll just go with what the report says and then take it from there. Okay. I'd like to make sure there aren't any surprises, too. I, I want to know for sure that we are not supporting any St. Patrick's Day events. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm not aware of any official <laughs> city target. support of any St. Patrick's Day events, although Mr. <laughs> well, uh, Mr. McClay working for us. might uh, might have some 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 private support of St. Patrick's Day, or at least some of the the vendors you might typically see at a St. Patrick's Day event, especially if it uh, involves Guinness. The you know, and and maybe a clarification too: uh, a difference between you know city general fund versus uh, what was formerly the RDA, which really we don't have anymore and I think the RDA was really the largest funder of some of the events uh, that uh, went on in the past specifically High Desert Opportunity I, I believe that that's where those sponsorships came out of uh, and there may have been others um, since we don't have the RDA to be able to do that anymore I mean even we're gonna be doing even less today and I think maybe pointing that out in the report as well um, did the airport sponsor anything? Did any of our, uh, did the water district sponsor anything? Not just the city and the city's general fund, but all of the agencies that we oversee. Okay, no problem. All right, so we do, let's go ahead and have a motion in that uh, regard in that discussion. <laughs> Motion by Council Member Kennedy, second by Mayor McEachran. Motion carries with Mayor Pro Tem Cabrales and Council Member Rothschild absent. Um, agenda item number 17, uh, this is discussion and possible action to direct staff to prayer council policy prohibiting city council members from accepting campaign contributions from people or agencies conducting business with the city. Um, I know Council Member Vi has requested this, but I'm gonna ask if you'd be willing to defer to when we have a full council for discussion? Certainly. Okay, I appreciate that. So that, uh, as far as I know, we're supposed to have a full council on the 15th, is that, is that correct? Point yes. Okay. All right, uh, then we'll move on to agenda item number 18, uh, discussion and possible action to direct staff to evaluate all Victorville schools for traffic safety. I, I think that's been pretty much addressed in this agenda, and I just wanted to, to thank you uh, for mm -hmm. the quick action and the staff's quick action, and appreciate it. And I want, I want to commend our uh, captain, Don Yoder. I know uh, you've been out there in force as much as you possibly can with the limited resources uh, that you do have, but uh, you've been out there in the mornings trying to make sure that people are slowing down. Um, and uh, Amethyst is just a freeway, uh, and people need to pay attention. There's just too many schools, too many uh, churches along there, too many daycare centers, and uh, so I appreciate what you're doing over there, but I hope you're doing it in other areas as well. I believe that that's, that's what you're t tasked with doing. Um, it's a shame that you have to spend your valuable resources uh, to get people to do what they should be doing otherwise. But um, I commend you and, and all your staff for what you're doing. You know, just, just a comment. I, this, this one struck me as, as so surprising. I, we all have experienced impatient drivers on the freeways, around town. We have probably, most of us, been an impatient driver at one time or another in our lives. But that incident where the three kids were hit was by a father with kids in his car who was impatient. So this is a, this is a, this is a serious, serious problem because that, there's no father that, that would put any child's life at risk that I know of. 
I mean, I'm a father of two and a grandfather of three, and the idea that any of them would ever be at risk just terrifies me. And rushing around in schoolyards is just, but it happens. It can happen to any of us, and it just, it's an awareness thing, it's an enforcement thing, but if we don't get at the awareness, uh, I, I don't know how we'll ever really deal with the problem. All right, we'll move on to council committee reports. Ms. Weiss? Um, I have none. Okay. I know I had the opportunity to sit as a uh, as an alternate uh, at a personnel matter at VVWRA, which I found very interesting and enlightening. Got to listen to all the, the HR people around the area talk about <laughs> VVWRA's HR plans. Uh, it was very interesting and well handled by Council Member Baez, by the way. Very patiently handled by <laughs> Council Member Baez. That's my job. <laughs> um. I, I was I wasn't going to speak to this because I wasn't actually there, but I know that um, well maybe you're going to speak to this under your next item, but the VVWRA or the VVTA. You know I, I I didn't make it to that, so I'm going to let you speak to it. Well, I wasn't there either. <laughs> oh, you weren't there? No, you I wasn't there. You were going. No, I wasn't there. Oh, and Could then I, I would have went. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Um, I heard it was we, great. We, have, we, we were both busy doing other things. Um, all right. So um, we'll move on to agenda item number 20, uh, discussion and possible action regarding items for the upcoming city council agenda. Mr. Kennedy? Uh, no, I think we have our hands full. <laughs> um, I'm, and I'm looking forward to that, that uh, if it is a workshop or a special meeting or whatever it is, I... I uh, I don't know if we should try to draw boundaries around it and confine it to Planned Parenthood or whether we should let it be a wide open discussion about concerns. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I, I think, I'll go either way. Yeah, I, I, I think that we just give them a forum to voice their concerns is, is what they want, to, want us to do. And let's just do it. What I think we need to be cautious about is forming an opinion and establishing our own position before we're asked to to act in an objective way and make a decision. And I don't know, I do not know a single person on this planet that I have ever met who's in favor of abortion, period, ever. And I do know people who have had that awful experience. It's a complicated issue. It is an extremely complicated issue, and I think as council members, we've got to find a way to deal with this and you know, with all the objectivity we can muster. And I'm afraid, I'm really concerned that wearing white ribbons on this dais biases this entire process because we all know what the white ribbon means. I love life like anybody in this room in children's lives, but we have a duty to be objective. I just would just offer that as a thought. Well, and again, I think it goes to the point that we don't even have a project in front of us. Um, I think that this is just a forum for uh, the members of the public to voice their concerns over certain issues that might occur here in Victorville or in the Victor Valley or in the high desert uh, or in the nation in the world for that matter. Um, all right, I have uh, no items, so we'll move on to reports from staff and council members. Staff has no additional comments, Mr. Mayor. I don't have any agenda items either. And no no report. No report? Mr. Kinney? Nothing. And neither do I. So uh, without two other council members, we're adjourned.